taking you guys so long? I mean, I thought I'd lost you. How can you walk so fast in this heat? Yeah, we're dying. Come on, we're almost there. I'm not sure sitting by a roaring fire is the best way to spend the hottest night of the year. I said we rename it the Heat Wave Society and tell the story about my uncle's pool. Come on, it's not that hot. How can you say that? How could she say that? How could she wear that? You still have your jacket on? By the end of my story, you'll be wearing yours too. Because I got a sure way to beat the heat. A story that's guaranteed to give everyone a massive case of the ship. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story The Tale of the Frozen Coast. It all began when Charles Pemberton Schilling of the third was sent with his babysitter to spend a weekend with his aunts so his parents could go to a wedding in town. It was the coldest winter anyone could remember in a hundred years. Aren't you hot with all that stuff on? It's 90 degrees in here. I'm not allowed to catch a cold. Daphne had been putting up with, I mean, babysitting Charles since she was 12. So she knew what she was getting into. Are we here? Yep. This is it. Whoa, Spooksville or what? What's the holdup? Doesn't look like anyone's home. Yeah, I don't think this is the place. How do you know? You've never even met them. Come on. Now what's the problem? What if they're asleep? What if they get mad at us for waking them up and they don't like us and they're mean to us all week? They're your relatives, not a couple of wicked old witches. I hope. Since you're a baby. Oh, you grown. <laughs> this must be the babysitter, Debbie. Daphne. Oh, well, well, so sorry. But you're right, so please do come, come in. Come, come along, Charlie. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Charlie.
Come along, dear. Young man, you must be exhausted from the drive. Why don't you let us make you a cup of tea? Oh, thanks, but uh, I'd better be going. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Shame he had to run off. Yes, well, they never do stay long anyway. The main thing is we have our little Charlie with us. Let us give you the grand tour of our humble abode. <laughs> We agreed not to mention that. Credit, dear, I only said hosts, not ghosts. Ghosts? Silly me. My hearing isn't what it used to be. Ghosts? Your ants are totally neat. What? Kind of weird. Why? Because their house isn't new and perfect like yours? We can't all be rich and rich. Hey, don't. You'll get a wrinkly. Fine. Do it yourself if you're going to be picky. Mom said I have to take care of my things. Whatever. I'll draw your bath, sire. Doctor, you wait. Did you hear that? What? A voice from outside. The wind, Charles. You heard the wind. Now get a move on or you'll be late for supper. thing never quite worked right, I'm afraid. We're only using it because the electric range doesn't work when the power's out. Why is the power out? Oh, it's that old electric company. They get all uppity when a person's just a wee bit late for the payment. Greta, dear, it's been three months. Hush, Maylene. Remember what Father always said? Keep your finances to yourself. Gee, if you're having trouble with money, well, won't Charles's parents help you out? Neither a borrower nor a lender be. Did Father say that too, Greta? Actually, Father would roll over in his grave if he heard us even talking about borrowing money from the Pemberton and Schilling side of the family. Why? I mean, it's not like they're short on cash. Well, there was this little feud. It was a long time ago. There was a terrible falling out between Father and Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie was Charles' great-grandfather. He hired a common criminal to work on the farm. Maylene, Uncle Charlie didn't know he was a criminal when he hired him. Yes, but Father thought there was something odd about him from the start. Uncle Charlie wouldn't listen. Wow, was he a murderer? Goodness, no. As far as I know, he was a bank robber. Well, what happened? The police caught him in the woods out back and put him on the train to prison. End of story. Well, Greta, dear, that wasn't my understanding. I heard he never made it to prison. Train crashed. 
and everybody on it was killed. They never found the body of that poor man. See? Close that window after we let the smoke out. We did, sister. Maybe it doesn't shut just right. I'm sure I felt a distinct chill just now. It's all right, children. We'll see about having it fixed in the morning. Mm, Walter was supposed to do it, but he left rather suddenly. Who's Walter? Uh, he was our old maintenance man. <laughs> I'm afraid he got rather uh, impatient with us. Because you couldn't pay him? Is that why he left, Greta? I thought it was because of the ghost. Ghost? Uh, would you like some more macaroni and cheese? There's lots. You think there's a ghost here? Who is it, the bank robber? Ghost? I don't think we should talk about such things. Why not? Because we know how young imaginations can take the simplest things and build them up into nightmares and the like. But I'm not afraid of ghosts, and neither is Charles. Are you, Charles? Ghosts? Really, dear, it's better we don't. I'm going to apologize because every time I talk about this, strange things happen. Maylene, that is enough. Get out of my bed and go back to sleep. It wasn't a dream. I mean, I was having a bad dream. And then I woke up. The window burst open, crashed like that. And then I looked down and I saw him. And, and, oh, you've got to believe me. Now, children, it's not nice to argue. Why won't you tell Auntie Greta what's wrong? Charles kept me up all night because he thinks he saw a ghost. He's mad because I don't believe him. What's that? What did you see? The ghost. I saw it. He says it talked to him. I did. Oh, Greta, did you hear that? It's never spoken to us. You mean you've seen it too? Now, Daphne, Debbie. Daphne. You mean there is a ghost and it's not just a ghost story? Well, I suppose there's no use pretending now. It was little Charlie we were trying to protect, and he's already seen it. Besides, it never comes in the house, so there's no need to worry. You guys really believe this, don't you? Of course we do. Cool. Well, whose ghost is it? Well, 
No one knows exactly, but there was this little boy who lived at a neighboring farm, and Father said he used to come over here all the time, sneak around the house, trying to find where Mother hid the cookies. What happened to him? It's very tragic. No one really knows. They just found him one day out in the woodshed, all curled up like he was trying to keep warm. They said he froze to death, poor thing. How sad. Ah, look at that. The fire's gone out again. Oh, no, and we <sighs> have no more wood. Does that mean we're going to freeze to death, too? No, there's plenty of wood around. Just tell me where to go, and I'll bring some in. I was thinking, maybe we should call Mom and Dad, and they can come and get us. I'm sure their wedding's over by now. The axe isn't where they said it would be. Axe? How else do you chop wood? I don't know. I've never chopped wood. Well, there's a first time for everything. Come on. Am I getting it dirty, chopping wood? Filthy. This should do the trick. Hey, this isn't hard at all. In fact, it's kind of fun. Want to try? Yeah. <sighs> but I'm not allowed to play the sharp things. I can't take it anymore. You are a complete and total wuss. I am not. You are too. You're always finding an excuse not to do things. When are you going to quit being such a freak? I am not a freak. Yeah, right. If it weren't for me, you'd be a total couch potato sitting at home playing a nice, safe video game in your nice, clean clothes. What's wrong with clean clothes? You want to know what's wrong with clean clothes? I'll show you what's wrong with clean clothes. Uh. Oh. oh, look, he's still alive. What a surprise. He survived a little bit of mud. That's it. I'm telling my mom you did that. I'm telling my mom and dad. They're going to get angry at you. What was that? The ghost! The ghost! We have to get back to the house! Maybe it grabs and it won't come inside! I think it came from over here. No! Daphne! Come back! What does it want? It's a log from my dream. What? He was in the log. The bad guy pulled up his... Charles! I see something. 
doing? He just wanted his coat. We helped him. Yeah, we helped him. What's this? It must have fallen out of the jacket. Whatever could that be? Looks like some kind of key. I know. Why, of course! It's the latch for the stovepipe. That's why it never worked properly. We couldn't get the flue open without it. <laughs> Maylene, Greta, I have a feeling your money troubles are over. The criminal hid the gold in the pipe. And the little boy saw him when he was looking for cookies. Charles's dream. Poor kid. He froze to death hiding from the criminal, and no one knew. I told you, you'd get the shivers. I declare this meeting of the Heat Wave Society. Closed. Good night, everybody.